So this video we're going to talk about leg length discrepancy, which basically just means the difference between your right and your left leg. Now most people would assume that we're all pretty, pretty well built and therefore we would all be pretty level and have similar leg length uh, from right to left. Um, and if we weren't, then it would be unusual. In fact, the research shows that this is the reverse and that actually 90% of people have got a leg length discrepancy, meaning only 10% of people are pretty much level. So this means that it is really common. Uh, does that therefore mean it's normal? Um, and this is where the land gets murky. If you talk to some people, they'll say that, you know, you have to have a difference that's significant. And this could be when you look at certain reports, say surgically, they look at, you know, some people say, oh, it's gotta be two centimeters, two and a half centimeters to be clinically significant. The reality is though, this is based on certain parameters to do with actually um, you know, raising shoes up or even going down the drastic measures of surgical interventions. But when you think about the correction of leg length or improvement of leg length discrepancy can be simple and easy by simply putting in an orthotic to correct the leg length, it's not uh, invasive, it's not surgery, it's not needing to build up shoes in most people's cases, and therefore it's pretty quick and easy to sort out. And therefore on that basis, it seems daft to sort of go, oh, you're not level and it's causing asymmetrical pain in your knee. And, um, you know, you look pretty out of a line when we put you um, stood normally. And if we put a raise under, it levels you up. It seems silly to not think about maybe the, the quick and easy put a raise in and see if it changes it. And therefore, I don't believe that it's, you know, means that everyone who's got a difference needs a correction because that's unknown. Like it, it could be relevant for the longer term. Some people talk about tracking being out in your car type of an idea. And there could be some truth in this, but it's very difficult to know this because you'd have to get two identical twins who live the same lifestyles, get them at the beginning, give them uh, one a leg length discrepancy and the other one not, and then let them live their life. And then at 40 years old, 50 years old, go, right, what's the difference? Well, of course, that's gonna cost too much money, take too much time, and it's gonna be highly unethical. It's never gonna happen. So you'd never really know. So it's also, it's all this extrapolation and theoretical premise, but, I think there is something to this and I think therefore if it's quick and easy and what I do with some people I see them and I go right let's try a raise for a week see what the raise feels like if they come back in and go I felt better then why would you not do that if they come in and go I feel worse you go okay we'll bin that there you go and if they feel similar you think well let's try for a bit longer and so on and so forth Bear in mind, this isn't the only approach that we will be taking. And the body is able to compensate for leg length discrepancies. Um, obviously, everybody's different. It relies upon the ability to move. So flexibilities around certain joints. It relies upon strength. It relies upon stability. And obviously, a lot of these things some people have in higher levels and lower levels. So this is why you can't say categorically that leg length is significant because it is half a centimeter or that leg length is insignificant. It basically doesn't work as simple as that. You've got to look at each individual's ability to compensate for their difference. And all you need to be is within the window of where your body can compensate. And as a physio, I can come at it from both sides. I can put a raise in to correct the difference so they haven't got to compensate as much. And I can improve their ability to compensate because I can give them exercises and do things which will increase strength and flexibility and mobility and stability, which means that they can then deal better with the differences they do have. Bear in mind, 90% of people have got a difference and 90% of people aren't walking around in agony. So it doesn't mean that that's irrelevant and they might get problems at some point in their life that could be caused by it. But this is something we don't know for certain. Certainly there could be some theoretical ideas, like I said before, but we don't know this. So leg length, like I say, this research shows that it's super common, but super common doesn't mean correct, doesn't mean normal necessarily. So I think we still have to look at it with individual case by case basis with regards to is that leg length uh, problematic in this individual? And if it is, it's quick and easy to correct. And if it isn't, it's quick and easy to correct and go, oh, it didn't work then. So there's still some relevance to it. But anyway, I thought I'd touch on this subject, um, but that's it for this one and I'll see you next time.